so, I think it was around the end of September we hit this yard sale that was just down the street and wow, it was like a baby boomer generation X time capsule and with some really great stuff from the 60s, 70s, and 80s and some 90s. But anyway, the first uh, thing I scored there was right out front on the lawn in a in the free section, it was this uh, Hyundai uh, Super 286T computer. It was just the system itself. Uh, didn't see the keyboard or any other other stuff at the time. But uh, so I set that aside, and then continued our shopping. Then came back a little later and that was when I uh, found the keyboard and its dust cover and of course they remembered me and didn't charge me for it since it did go with the free computer as well and then of course we hit the same yard sale the next day and that was where we found the documentation and the software and that and of course they didn't charge for that either but that was when I decided that it was time to finally do a little video here to, on a restoration project is like back around the turn of the century I used to collect this sort of thing as well as a lot of the old video games and whatnot and then sold it all off pretty n nicely because I just didn't have time for it and wasn't and it was taking up too much space but now I've been seeing got the bug again a little bit seeing a lot of these other 8-bit and other retro channels coming up so this is my first foray into this uh, sort of thing so anyway I noticed at first that uh, the floppy drive is going to have to be replaced and I'm pretty sure I got one of the uh, 1.2 mega down in the basement. And of course it's equipped with the usual AT keyboard port, uh, parallel and serial. And it actually has a VGA card installed so pretty normal on the graphics for its time, I guess. Mm. And then in the lower bay is a 40 megabyte uh, Connor CP6000, I think it was. It's an IDE hard drive at least, so uh, that means it's going to be pretty easy to upgrade. I got plenty of older IDE drives, I believe, still from back when I was collecting this stuff, and I'm pretty sure I got this should be able to take at least up to a 512 meg. If not, then 240 meg pair of those, and should be good to go with DOS, and might even make it dual boot with CPM86, just because. This one is equipped with ISA slots. There's three 16-bit and one 8-bit. One of the 16-bit slots has uh, a VGA card in it, and it just says a VGA one Can't really tell the make and model. And of course, I also have a 16-bit uh, Sound Blaster picked out for it, and I know I've got a uh, 
ISA 3COM Ethernet card that can go in as well. All that leaves will be something in the 8 bit slot, which will probably be a modem at some point in the future. Because uh, it will likely be uh, used as one way to uh, uh, transfer stuff to other old, even older systems like K Pros and other things that don't have that can't read DOS disks or whatever. I used to be able to do that just a direct modem to modem transfer which if I get around to that I'll demonstrate that at some point if someone else doesn't beat me to it. Also takes a, a three and a half volt to rechargeable battery of some sort. I'm not sure what how common these are, or if this one needs replacing yet, but uh, if it's too much trouble trying to find the actual thing, I'm sure I could probably rig something up with some other button cell batteries or something. There's also four empty sockets here. Which, no idea what would go in those. I'll have to go through the manual at some point. And of course, I eventually want to get a math coprocessor in there because why not? So, that being said and done, I'm going to go ahead and put the top back on and we'll. Get it powered up and go from there to determine what uh, needs done. Okay, that's good. Good enough, at least. Glad this has VGA and isn't uh, relegated to just uh, CGA or EGA. And that makes monitor options much more. better variety of monitor options. Anyway, I won't need to plug in sound from the monitor. fumbling around with the system trying to get the case on properly which didn't need to get a recording of all of that we are ready for its power up Uh, 
Okay, so yeah, that battery is going to need replaced. I think I'll go ahead and just keep it plugged in overnight, see if it charges up. It has the full 1 meg of RAM that systems of the time could access. Alright, let's hit continue for now and then next reboot will uh, go to setup. Okay, and it's trying to find boot disk in the floppy drive. Alright, now let's do this. Control Alt Escape. So. See if I can find my notes on what the drive settings were. Actually, I have them back here. Numlock must have been off. Okay. 980. Pins 5. Sector 17. And then L zone 980. Not going to bother trying to set the date and time right now. I just want to see if it's going to detect... I'm going to try to boot the hard drive. Although when I had it powered up earlier and put my hand on the drive it felt like... Uh, didn't feel like it was running at all, but we'll see. Let's see... F10... F5 to confirm... Huh, this time the battery passed. Interesting. Floppy disk controller error or no controller present. Diskette drives or types mismatch error run setup. Okay, this is going to take a bit of researching to see how we're going to get this little beastie up and running as a 286 games machine. But that's all for now.